Welcome one, welcome all, to a world where anything's possible. This is Love vs. Fear, Episode 5, Occult Knowledge. Today is June 28, 2020. On today's episode, we are going to try and cultivate our understanding of the occult, arcane, and esoteric bodies of knowledge, which most people willfully ignore. Now, before I jump right into this topic of occult knowledge, I want to define the words occult, arcane, esoteric, and exoteric first. For you to learn anything, understanding of these definitive, accurate, and precise definitions of the words I'm using is required, so you know exactly what I mean, obviously, and we leave no room for interpretation and misunderstanding. Not only there's something called a homophone, which is the same word, in pronunciation but different spelling but homonyms are words with the same pronunciation or spelling but different meaning so it's very important to understand the gray area so to speak that exists where i say a word and it have a myriad of different definitions this is why it's important to understand the etymology of a word so you can recognize the true intended meaning of a word by where it's derived from learning any words roots and how it changes over time allows for a broader application of grammar rhetoric and wisdom and furthermore allows for better understanding of context and how words are used especially with the culture it's being used in and with the tonality it's being said in and whatnot. So homonyms suck because they lead to a lot of misunderstanding. But when you understand all the ways a word can be used and where it originates from, you have a greater ability to perceive clarity on how words might have been intended to be used in whatever context or speech you are interpreting. And it's just a lot easier to communicate with people when you have intellectual standards developed. Standards such as clarity, accuracy, relevance, logicalness, breadth, B-R-E-A-D-T-H, not breadth, but breadth, precision, significance, completeness, fairness, and depth. You can understand the context of any form of communication of an idea with these standards. So without further ado, I'm going to try and lay down these definitions of the words occult, arcane, esoteric, and exoteric. So exoteric meaning known by the majority, known by the aggregate population, common knowledge. You know, common sense should be exoteric. But unfortunately, not a whole lot of people seem to have knowledge on natural law. The word exoteric is derived from late Latin exotericus or exotericos. And it meaning it's pertaining to the outside or belonging to the outside or external world. It's simply general popular knowledge of the outside world. The sky is blue. Gravity. Natural law fundamental principles of reality, or what it should be. Esoteric knowledge, on the other hand, is known by the few, talking about concepts or ideas that are hidden, lost, or forgotten by many. Known by the minority, the word esoteric is derived from esotericos, meaning belonging to the inner circle. So it's knowledge of within, knowledge of the internal, okay? The word arcane is derived from arcanus, meaning secret, hidden, private, or concealed. And in esoteric teachings, there are two bodies of knowledge that are referred to as the lesser and greater arcanas. The lesser arcana does not mean knowledge of the less important information. It just means knowledge of the individuated monad units of consciousness on a microcosm level so knowledge of the microcosms and the greater arcana is the study of the knowledge referring to the macrocosmic universe both are equally important so both esoteric and arcane knowledge are describing hidden knowledge and so is occult knowledge the word occult is derived from the latin adjective occultus meaning hidden which comes from the latin verb occultare meaning to hide to conceal or to keep secret now, why would someone want to keep knowledge hidden or keep knowledge secret? There are only two main reasons. The first reason why someone would want to hide knowledge 
is because they are in a vibratory state of energy known as fear. They are in fear and afraid of what other people might do if they obtain that knowledge. It may or may not be seemingly noble and coming from a good place of care, but ultimately it's wrong because it's rooted in fear. And all knowledge was created to be free. And in reality, all knowledge, data, or information makes up the energy that impermeates all things and the space between all things. So without this realization, you cannot understand that the control of knowledge is the control of energy. And the control of energy is the control of me and you. Because we are energy. We are light beings. We are human beings. Hue as in color or shade of light. You know, and the other reason why people try to conceal, centralize, and control knowledge and keep it secret is so they can deceive and manipulate those without it. Because knowledge dispels all fear, without it, you can easily be put in the vibratory state of fear. It causes a trance-like state of internal confusion of who and what you are. And this confusion obviously leads to self-loathing because you cannot love what you do not know. And it also leads to apathy and many other potential mental disorders. So you got to understand no one has the right to hide knowledge. Even if it is something as extreme as nuclear launch codes, occult knowledge will only lead to more slavery, fear, and control. This is ultimately understood only when we take in true knowledge and process and understand it. True knowledge is known as gnosism or knowledge through experience. You know the stovetop will burn your hand because you've experienced that burn before. Gnosism is derived from the Greek word gnosis, meaning knowledge or awareness of truth. If everyone knew ultimate truth, only love, balance, peace, and freedom could possibly manifest. We could have anti-nuclear, anti-disaster technology instead of disastrous technology in the hands of psychotic, tyrannical, dark occultists known as the Bilderberg Group or the Federal Reserve that which is being controlled like by families like Rothschild, Morgan family, and the Rockefeller families who own more than 50% of the world's wealth. In every war, it started on behalf of centralized banks for more control and centralization of knowledge. So the ultimate hidden truth of our reality, our collectively shared and collectively created reality, is the truth behind morality. The most hidden and the most secret occulted truth is the truth about the difference between right and wrong. Because if evil can get you to believe right is wrong and wrong is right, this technique is called obfuscation. Karma will accrue for you and the ones you love. You will destroy yourself indubitably. A wrong is any action that results in the harm of another sentient being. I talked about that truth on episode 1 because it's the most important thing to know. This is the crux, the essence of occult, arcane, esoteric knowledge. The crux of natural law, the fundamental principles of our universally shared reality is the knowledge of the difference between right and wrong. The knowledge of freedom and morality which will be the main topic of the next episode. And just understand we learn the most when we make mistakes. It's not the end of the world when you have a terrible accident or make a few or more bad mistakes. It's not the mistakes that define us. It's how we learn from them and how we grow because of them that make us who we are. And I learned that truth from a very beautiful, beautiful mistake I made that I absolutely do not regret at all making. So yeah. Just know evil is the destruction of freedom, and things can only result in evil if they are wrong or harm other sentient beings. So wisdom, or morally right application of knowledge, is what creates freedom. And we will go in depth more about freedom next episode as well. Just know evil has to keep you in fear in order to easily control you, and knowledge dispels all fear. So that's why they want to hide it and keep the truth a secret. Because the biggest lie ever told is that truth does not exist. And even if it did, you'd never be able to understand it. You see, this is a perfect example of cognitive dissonance. Because it attempts to disguise itself as the truth. That lie attempts to tell you that there's no such thing as truth. And that, you know, it, it's a lie in itself. But it's claiming to be a truth while telling you there's no such thing as truth. So it's 
literally contradicting what it's trying to explain. Truth is simply cause and effect. It's that which is and that which has occurred. It's only a matter of time before people realize the simple and obvious truth about their pure conscious being, who they are, and what they are, and why they are, about their infinite value, worth, and potential, which all life has, and that truth will set you free. It's only a matter of realizing this truth it's only a matter of love versus fear it's only a matter of time until all evil which is rooted in ignorance and all ignorance which is rooted in fear to be dispelled by truth or love or god all the same word to me on this show it's all about overcoming that fear with knowledge knowledge dispels all fear knowledge and wisdom create freedom you see knowledge is not power Power only comes through wisdom or morally right application of knowledge. These morals exist in nature, in reality. Morals are rights or correct truths that are in harmony with natural law principles. And they are also actions when taken do not result in the initiation of harm to another sentient being. And on that note, I'm bringing this episode to a close. Don't forget to like and leave a comment or question on any topic related to truth, love, and freedom. I'll do my best to get back to you. So, that being said, know the truth. Zenuru. All life was born to be free. Peace.